Welcome tonight, everyone. It's very nice to see a lot of new faces. There's a, a clipboard going around with uh, paper on there. You can write your name and email address. Anyone have the clipboard? It's on the table. It's on the table. So if, you do, if you're not on the New Hampshire for Israel email list, we don't sell the addresses. We simply send an email. It's this clipboard. Just raise your hand if you're not on it. We'll just send you once a week on or, Sunday. Or they could go to our brand new website. Right, okay. Right. Okay. So um, it is very nice to, to have everyone here, but I wanted to start if we could a little differently tonight, uh, due to the yes. the atrocity that happened yesterday in Jerusalem, yes. uh, because um, in these, uh, I'm sure everyone here knows, but believe it or not, most people in New Hampshire don't know anything about it, which is uh, indicative of the United States. Unfortunately, people don't follow the news, but. But in uh, Kehillat Ben, ben uh, B'nai Torah Synagogue, which is in the, uh, the Harnoff neighborhood of Jerusalem, there were the men, it was an Orthodox synagogue, it is an Orthodox synagogue that reopened today, and, and it's in an area of Jerusalem that is an Anglo-Saxon area. It's uh, made up of Australians and Canadians, Americans, Brits, and some French. So it's a lot of English speakers there. And people who, um, a lot of them, what we call made Aliyah, which means they decided to move to Israel. And, uh, and that's why there were a lot of dual citizens who were, who were killed. So the, uh, the two savages who, who perpetrated this were released just a year ago. They were in the prison, uh, but they were released due to the Israeli-Palestinian peace talks. So that's very disappointing, yeah. to say the least, that they were once behind bars, and, and then they were able to do this and, and leave behind 24 children who now do not have fathers. Um, so the four, four worshipers were killed in addition to a policeman who is Druze, which is, a, which is actually a religion. It may not be known well in the United States, but it is known well in Israel, and they're very nationalistic, very patriotic towards Israel. They're not Jewish. And the, uh, and the Druze policeman killed at least one of the terrorists while he got shot in the head and then later passed away. Um, and the uh, and seven seven of the men who uh, they did survive, but they were uh, some of them critically, some of them uh, seriously uh, wounded. The, uh, the the ones who were killed, I wrote it down. I think their name should be should be verbalized. And uh, Rabbi Moshe Twersky, 59 years old. Calvin Levine, 55 years old. Rabbi Aryeh Kapinski, 43 years old. Rabbi Avraham Shmuel Goldberg, 68 years old. And last and not certainly least is the policeman who saved many others from tragedy. Zidan Saif, 30 years old, who left behind a, a baby of less than a year. So. I think we can just uh, have a little moment of reflection and, and think about, about that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate that. May their uh, memories be a blessing. So, uh, tonight, before we get to the featured speaker, which 
unfortunately, is very appropriate after yesterday's massacre. It's very unfortunate that that he has to um, that we have to have someone around the world monitoring this type of savage brutality. Just want to go through a couple things. Uh, you have on you had on your chairs various paraphernalia. If you are a couple and you don't need two, then um, you can give it to someone who doesn't have it. If you don't have it, any please raise your hand. Any of the papers. If you can get it to the people raising their hand, if you're a couple, you I know you won't need to. Thank you very much. If uh, Greg can come up, I'd appreciate it. So, I, so, I should have been, my name is Brian, Brian Grodman, by the way, and I'm just representative of New Hampshire for Israel, and, um, and, and Greg is, Greg Saltz had a wonderful idea, uh, so Greg, why don't you tell them your idea? Well, actually, I was going to ask Brian to do a moment of silence for the four victims that were murdered in Jerusalem. And I didn't ask him to, and I'm, and I'm glad that he did that. And uh, I wasn't aware that these two guys were released from prison, because I remember that release it was actually on my birthday. And it was the worst birthday present I ever got. It just got worse with this tragic event in uh, Jerusalem. So what I did was I went out and I bought a sympathy card. And I've been having people sign the card, and I want to mail this to the uh, synagogue in Jerusalem, which is, I don't know if you guys are uh, familiar with where uh, Herzl uh, Temple, Her Herzl Mount is, where Theodore Herzl is buried, that, that cemetery. It's pretty much right across the street in the neighborhood, right across the street. So I'm going to pass this around, if you guys don't mind signing it, and then we're going to send this to Jerusalem. There's not going to be space for everybody to write you know, a note, unfortunately. Okay, so that's it. And before we get to, uh, where's Mike? Michael? Okay, Michael's going to say a couple words here about something yesterday that he was able to explain. 45 minutes, Mike. Yep. Yesterday, uh, Brian and I went down to uh, Washington, D.C. for a meeting of uh, JINSA. Uh, it's a uh, small organization. Small organization that uh, deals with issues of uh, national security and uh, should be focused towards louder. Louder. Yes. Okay. Yesterday, Brian and I went down to uh, Washington D.C. for a meeting of JINSA. It's a small organization that I really wasn't even aware of um, until a couple of weeks ago when Brian started talking to me about it. Uh, stands. It's J-I-N-S-A, uh, Jewish Institute for National Security Affairs. Uh, as the name suggests, uh, deals with issues of U.S. national security, uh, with, with a focus on uh, on Israel and uh, uh, Jewish issues as well. Uh, I, I suppose there's some overlap with what APAC does, but this is a much smaller organization, and they only deal, that only address uh, a, a few topics at a time. The idea is that uh, a small force in a small area can generate a lot of pressure to be very effective uh, on, on the particular topics you're interested in. It was a great meeting. Uh, the, there were about 60 people there. Um, it was uh, retired senior military leaders, generals, admirals, uh, leaders of industry, uh, and uh, topics covered were uh, some of the current issues. The real focus was the, the concern about what's going on in Iran with the nuclear program. That seems to be the, the uh, primary concern, primary threat to Israel right now. And the big concern is that it's not being addressed appropriately uh, or, or taken seriously enough by this country. So if you're interested in knowing more about it, uh, if their website is jinsa.org. Uh, get an idea of who they are and, and what they've been doing. 